Every generation will not be confused. There is a generation that will get this thing. Say the compressed coffee from that day. The creative dimension of the prophetic. There must be a performance because. Some of you drugs and all kinds of vices. The purified bride must be free from this. Don't say it does not matter. The purified church must obtain grace from God. Please pray. Doesn't matter whether you are a pastor, apostle, prophet. God can give you a new beginning. Provided your heart is open to cry. You are following online. You are watching from any nation. I like you to pray. This is not a message unto condemnation. It is a sincere admittance that will lead to purity, holiness, and lift you to a higher level of spiritual exploits. Someone is praying, Lord, show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. I cry unto you. You may want to extend that prayer to someone you know and love. Lord, show my spouse mercy, probably. Lord, show my husband, my wife, show my children mercy, show my parents mercy, show my pastor mercy, show my, my, my CEO mercy, show this politician mercy. It's not a time of condemnation. The fall of one is the fall of all. The rising of one is the rising of all. We are a body that is interested in our corporate growth. I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Pray for everybody you know. Prayer groups, churches, ministries, pastors, leaders, politicians, heads of government. No one, no one is beyond being tempted with sexual immorality. No one is beyond being tempted with other immoral perversions. Has nothing to do with being good or bad. Pray that those who are bound by any and all kinds of addictions let it be broken in the name of jesus you are praying for yourself and you are praying for them praying for the body of christ hallelujah in jesus name i pray sin number one that the body of christ needs to be purified from sexual immorality and related perversions scene number two i'm giving you seven very quick the second scene that the body of christ needs to be purified from indeed the church is lost for money and material things please write it down lost for money and material things philippians chapter 3 let's hurry up please from verse 17 to 19 the lost for money and material things it says brethren be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have for an example uh-huh i'm trying to make sure that i pull these things mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 and verse 36 yes what shall it profit a man is it in your bible if he gains the whole world that's a business terminology and loses his own soul this is another cancer that is sweeping the body of christ and we need god to show us mercy we are victims of it as men of god as churches as believers the loss for money and material things first timothy chapter 6 please and verse 6 to 10 lost for money and material things first timothy 6 6 to 10 but godliness with contentment the bible says is great gain for we brought nothing into this world please look at me have you ever seen a naked baby come out of his mother's womb holding dollars or holding gold and say i came from heaven leave my thing for me everybody comes naked and have you ever seen a dead man who is departing and as soon as they are burying him, he just reaches and draws his gold chain to his grave. It does not happen. From birth and at your point of transition, you are empty. This should give us wisdom already. Are we together? Let's finish up that scripture. 
for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out uh-huh and having food and raiment let us therewith be content nine watch this it says but they that will be rich fall into temptations i'll explain this for you and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men into destruction and perdition verse 10 for the love of money the word there is eros an ungodly affinity and attachment to money is the foundation of every kind of evil it is the strengthener of all kinds of evil he said which while some coveted after have erred from the faith and have passed themselves through with many sorrows please look up i believe in prosperity it is god's desire to bless his people materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials upon your relationship you see the bible tells us that god and mammon this spirit that controls worldly wealth that it seeks for allegiance money does not just want to end up in your pocket money wants you to end up in its pocket are we together now yes when our entire sermons our entire lives our entire conferences our entire conventions with all due respect and honor to the body of christ when everything becomes about money you cannot hold an evangelistic crusade and right there before souls come we're talking about money there is no business between evangelism and talking about prosperity principles that should be in a believers conference those who have now been saved then it is part of the growth process that mentors and builds them hallelujah some of us here as you are looking at me you can kill because of money are we together yes our affinity for money you can have 10 million in your account if 10,000 is missing you can go around even in the night with torchlight to sleep and wake up in the morning you will not wait till it's morning you must complete that 10 million 10,000 affinity material things this has controlled who and what we marry this has controlled who and what we get money can call you leave nigeria and come to uk can say no 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 go back again money controls people around the world like a remote control listen let me tell you the truth i have taught you on financial principles it is not sarcasm god wants to bless us but not by becoming so emotionally obsessed and attached with money there are people the moment they became wealthy they told their wives from today you will not stay with me go out into the other room because i don't trust anybody i've suffered too much <laughs> listen to me you can be prosperous lay up gold as dust beyond your wildest imagination and yet not be attached to it the goal of bringing this right now is to be able to teach you that God wants you to prosper. Marketing poverty as a sign of holiness and piety is inaccurate. No. If poverty were good, some of it would be found in heaven. And since there is none of it found there, it means it did not come from there. Are we together now? So I'm not teaching you from a standpoint of an irresponsible man of God who is unmindful of the reality of the times. I understand. And there are scriptural strategies. And for as long as I live, among the many mentorship um, teachings that you will receive is empowerment. I am vocal and I am unashamed and unapologetic about the blessing of God's people. It's a sermon I will never change till I see his face. My assignment is to balance you, to see to it, that it does not become obsession because we need to balance this for many believers our obsession the reason why we go to church and the entire scope of our christian pursuit is money is the reason why people can steal people can do anything because of money and sadly in many christian circles respectfully speaking the major index for measuring faith is wealth so if your faith is working let me see it by the car you are driving if your faith is working let me see it by the house if the man of God, if there's, it shouldn't be. 
while we continue to reject poverty we must cry and pray that god will grant us grace even by his mercy to be people who can look at money is the reason why many believers compromise someone will dangle one million and you say ah i rather enjoy it now and tell god sorry later the body of christ needs to be delivered from lust for money and material things sin number three is god helping us let me tell you the truth before we go to number three the cure for lust for money and material things is number one to be properly mentored on the kingdom's pathway to wealth and abundance you can do well to listen to my teaching the power to get wealth we have done several teachings along this line you would observe in that teaching that i taught you that the first law the first spiritual law for wealth and abundance is not tithing it is not giving the first law is the law of absolute surrender until you are dead to yourself dead to the flesh and alive unto god your obeying business principles is simply bargain and investment you are doing with god so there are many people who bring tithe and bring offering as a bribe as an exchange god you better see it i'm dropping it and you drop it and go back and say god i'm waiting and god says what do you really love the money or me the law of absolute surrender they gave of themselves first the macedonian church and then they gave of their substance so now number three are we learning the third sin that the bride of christ which is the church of the lord jesus christ must be purged. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.